thing that is constant is change. And art changes, technology changes, and technology opens up continuously new possibilities for, for artists and for poets. So we forget that the pencil was a technology. We forget that oil painting was a technology because it gets used so much, it gets incorporated into the larger vocabulary and we tend to no longer see it as a technology. So we can't fetishize technology, we can't only consider technology something that is new and that we don't know anything about. Technology is a whole gamut of material production and all art has engaged in technology. So the real issue, in my opinion, is the resistance to change that many have because technology has always been a part of art making. When somebody at some point in prehistory looked at the flower and had the idea of making pigment out of it, that was technology. So the real issue is, is, is this increased resistance that one has to new possibilities. And, and I think the emphasis in regards to our technology has to be in remaining open, in, 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 uh, in, in preserving this, this drive, this search, this desire to explore and to navigate and to uh, invent the realities. And, and to me, that's, that's what technology enables. To me, nature basically means the laws of physics. So, the laws of physics, they regulate the material interaction of the world. So, in a sense, everything falls under the laws of physics, which means that everything that falls under the laws of physics is natural. Evolution did not make a green glowing rabbit. But the laws of physics allow a green glowing rabbit to exist. So my work in that sense is no more or less natural than a particularly random direction that uh, evolution took. First of all, uh, I think it's important to, to clarify what I mean by communication. Communication for me is not an act of transmission of information. Communication for, for me is, is a situation in which an opening is produced, that interaction is possible, that intersubjective exchange is possible. It's this opening between uh, two individuals or more, uh, and, and, and the fact that this opening it, it preserves a sense of responsibility that is not only mutually, but also in the relationship, but also in the sense of response. In other words, it's not an opening that flows in one direction only. And, and by not flowing in one direction only, it has a transformative power, which means that you may not be the same person after this communication experience. And so it's, it's the, this is what I'm interested in, and, and, I, and I believe that this phenomenon is, is fundamental to, to life. In fact, it, it, it's the coming together of disparate parts it's, it's this material communication of things that were once separated that made life possible in the first place, uh, that made the first organisms possible in the first place. And it is the interaction among these organisms with, for example, exchange of molecules, exchange of DNA, that
that that has made all life possible. So I see communication not only as a use of words to tell somebody something, but I see it as, as, a, as a fundamental process of, of all life. Own right, and 
and and that this type it's a different type of response it's a different moment in the development of, of, of the work and um, that is so but 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 the amount of writing and, and response continues to grow so the lot of lists are more a response to this new phase the second phase in which the body is no longer say an object of concern but uh, but rather a conduit to uh, to different insights, and and it's also a reaction to the fact that a huge amount of discourse has been produced. So I thought that it would it would be interesting for the bunny to respond, even though she's no longer alive, even though this response is vicarious. But it would be interesting for the bunny to produce this visual language that was rabbit-like, and, and the lagoglyphs are, are uh, there are a series of works that are based on that. My art has changed dramatically since 97 when I coined the term. We're getting close to the 20th anniversary of, of my art. And uh, in the beginning, we were about a handful of artists working in this area. Now you have countless uh, books and symposia and dissertations and exhibitions. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a developed uh, field that continuously expands, which means that there is room for all kinds of approaches uh, Heather, who is a colleague of mine in, in Chicago, uh, has this uh, this this uh, political angle that she's interested in exploring. So it's it's a testament to to the richness of of my art that it can have a more poetic approach, or a more political approach, or a more performative approach. That uh, we have all these different voices that can be equally expressed in, 